Gary's upset this morning because Tracy did her show last night and she she trashed Gary pretty good. Oh, it was Gary it was she was Gary. angry at? And Gary thinks I created a nightmare giving everybody shows and <laughs> might be right. I don't know. Mm. Oh, dear. Yeah, so. What'd she say? What was well, her problem she has with Gary? A, well, she has feelings about Gary. And, of course, Tracy, we asked Tracy to go on the air and be, you know, angry Tracy and let it all out. And she did. She did her job. Ooh. But it, it, it makes it awkward for Gary this morning because... He's going to see her for the first time. Tracy and Gary work together every day. After hearing that. Yeah. yeah. I, I, my first thought when I, I... Listen, I got some emails last night. Um, Fred sent out emails about the show and... The second email I read is, I knew Gary was a racist, homophobic, and I'm like, what? What, what, what did I she miss? She didn't accuse you of that, as far as no, I No, no, no. She accused me of being a phony, and then somebody takes it to the next level. Oh, I see. Um, and so then I saw another email, like, kudos to Tracy for calling out her boss. You know, that takes balls. So I was try I couldn't, but so then I spent all night, I was trying to figure out what, you know, what it was that she might have said. But I, my, my, my initial thoughts are, if you, have an, if you have an issue with me, we probably should discuss it. Like, she never came to me and said, right. hey, I don't feel good about the way things are going. Well, you see, she's in the unusual position of, I know this position because I do a radio show every day. It's, um, the show is only interesting. You're a bore if you don't bring stuff up that's, right. you know, inside. But, you listen, but then yeah. if you do bring it up, you got to, the next day, you got to deal with everybody. Right. You got to, you know, listen, you could, she, she can, she doesn't have to do the show. <laughs> Nobody threw her down and twisted her arm and said, do the show and make sure you trash right. everybody. Um, I wasn't completely surprised. I don't think anybody's immune from Tracy. I mm -hmm. really feel that. And, right. and obviously, based on last night's show, nobody is, except for you. Right. Other than that, I think everybody's up for grabs. Yeah. <gasps> maybe I'm, maybe it's that I'm perfect and no one can <laughs> Well, that's not anything. true. No, that that's not true. Saying. When does Tracy get in? <laughs> Uh, probably around 8.30 or 8 9 30. Maybe early, maybe 8 o'clock. So I don't know. I mean, that, I, it, the fact that I don't know must be very disrespectful. Is it going to be very weird f to see her after she trashed you on the radio? Um, it'll be a little weird for me. But All listen. Right. Did you hear exactly what was yeah. said? No. Well, I didn't hear it until I came in this morning. Okay. Like I said, I, I, I actually had trouble getting to sleep last night because after I saw the I knew Gary was a racist and a homophobe oh. email, I tried to sit in bed and figure out what it was that she would have said about me. Right. All right. Although some of the things that she said I, I knew could be coming. Mm. All right, let me find your stories here because she trashed Lisa G, too. Mine start at the bottom of the first column of the tr this 10 Tracy clips. And yeah. Scott said he could have done 20. Mm. Oh, really? Yeah. She was oh. on fire last night. All right. This one says Gary disrespects her. Do you want to answer the charges? Or, well, let's or, hear them first. Okay. Then I'll answer. All right. My topic for tonight is Gary fucking Baba Booey Delabate. <laughs> Gary, you fuck. <laughs> I love you. I do. And I don't, I don't consider you a piece of shit, but <laughs> you're kind of a piece of shit. You know, the one of the things that I could say about Gary is that when I first started here, he always said to me, you know, it's a boys club, blah, blah, blah. It's going to be hard for you. The only fucking one that treats me any different than everybody else is Gary. It's his boys club that makes it that way. He includes Jason, Steve, Will and John. And that's his boys club. He I mean, it's gotten to the point where if Gary has something to tell me. Gary can't even tell me. Gary will tell Jason and tell Jason to tell me. And half the time, Jason forgets to tell me. And then nobody fucking tells me. And all of a sudden, I'm the asshole. All right, wait a second. So I got to stop this because there's a lot of accusations. I I'm taking notes here. I see. <laughs> I do. I really am. You got to answer every charge. First thing is that um, it's a boys club. And... I already forgot the accusation. Okay, so, well, it's, so it's a, a boys, boys club. club. She, uh, he only talks to John, Jason, Will. All right, uh, tell me okay. what's going on. Here. Yeah. So I probably stop in Tracy's office once a week because I, the, 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 here's the thing with Tracy. The worst, the, the word, the word of the day for Tracy is respect. Right. You either respect her. If you don't respect her enough, you disrespect her. Right. You know, there's no. You know what okay. I mean? There's no. Other and way. I, my feeling is, is that if you hang around with Tracy long enough, you're gonna disrespect her. Because it's impossible to give her the amount of respect that she requires on a daily basis. <laughs> Sooner or later, you're going to disrespect her. Right. So I, I I like Tracy. I stop by her office. I'd say once a week, I sit down and I just chat with her. How's everything going? What'd you do this weekend? You know, how are you? Oh, that's um, nice. Um, I, wow. And the whole, the whole, the whole, th I love Gary, but, you know, the whole, right. that Don Rickles shit doesn't fly. I love Gary, but here's why he's an asshole. Mm. Um, 
I know that with the boys club thing, one of the things that she's mad about, which I may have come up in the show later, was uh, I have a ski house, a very, very tiny, the smallest ski house you can imagine, the size of your thumb. Howard, no jokes aside, it's a kind of ski house where if somebody farts upstairs, you can hear it downstairs, right? Right. I had um, me, John Hine, Will, and Jason invited everybody to go ski, and I didn't invite Tracy. Probably one of the biggest reasons I didn't invite Tracy is because the upstairs is one large room with two twin beds and two pullouts. Uh -huh. The guys were up there. It was like the three stooges. You know, everybody's in their underwear. People were farting. Jason snored all night. Then blamed it that John Hine was snoring all night. It would have been unbelievably uncomfortable for Tracy to sleep in that group of guys. It's like well, it was I like, think it would be inappropriate. You're right. So then I knew that she was upset about that. So be because of that, again, I, I, this is how much I think about it. I have, have been. I joined the Friars Club. Haven't been there once yet. Right. So I thought to myself. Let me get a bunch of guys. I always said I want to get the group together. Let's go to the Friars Club. So I put together a group of people to go to the Friars Club, which was John, Will, Jason, Steve Brandano, JD, and Tracy. Right. And I picked a day, and the day came, and I had something came up. Something came up, actually, I had to do with my mother. And I canceled. Apparently, I'm a piece of shit for that. Oh. Um, the, the accusation about how I don't talk to her, I talk to Jason. Sometimes we're in here on Tuesdays, and we're going over stuff. And you go, do we have to have a meeting today? And I go, well, if I go over some stuff with you... I, I, I'll say, I can go over stuff with you right now so we don't have to have a meeting. So in my head, before I forget, I'll say to Jason, make sure you let Tracy know there's no meeting. Apparently, me not walking down the hallway or picking up the phone is a, is a sign of disrespect. I see. But again, I'm just trying to make sure everybody knows everything. That it You're works. trying to facilitate your job. For me to walk out of here and go tell her there's no meeting now takes away the two minutes I have for, with you to go over the stuff to make sure there is no meeting. Right. Well, yeah. And, well, I mean, you're, you're basically... What, is she your assistant? or? Who? I call her the office manager. She calls me her boss. I've never treated her like an underling, even though she'll go on and talk how I do. I always, uh, I, always, uh, I always feel like we work together. I, go, I, I don't think I ever override her, or I've never yelled at her. Right. And I'll say, like, we're having an issue with something. What do you want to do? How do you want to handle that? What do you think is the best way? I always have open communication. I never say, listen, it's my way or the highway. Mm -hmm. Do what the fuck I say. I've never treated her like that. Right. All right, let me go on. Yes. Okay, what is that? If you have something to tell me, you have a phone, we have an intercom, you have a fucking IM, and I sit down the hall. Take the well, I know what Gary's talking about. It's very intense in here because we have very few commercial breaks. So we are, Gary will say to me, okay, we don't need a meeting today. I got to get through this stuff with you, though. And then he goes, he goes Jason, go, go down, tell Tracy, cancel meeting because there's some people who will show up. You got to give them right. Right. notice. Of course. So I get that. But even sometimes, sometimes I, I listen, I call Tracy on the intercom a bunch of times a day. I'll call her and ask her about this and that. And then sometimes I'll have something. Maybe I'm leaving and I'll go, hey, Jason, can, can you make sure Tracy gets this? Because it's down the hall. Hmm. I, I, I don't know that, um, again, I don't feel that that's a lack of respect. All right. Ten extra fucking steps. Let me hear more from Tracy. Stop playing Sporkle or fucking Solitaire <laughs> or whatever the fuck it is and come and tell me what you need to tell me. Oh, a meeting is canceled? What's Sporkle? Um, Sporkle, I guess it's a, it's like an online game. I see. You, you don't play, play that? that? I played it in the past, and yeah, you know, why are you, act, why are you acting like you don't know what it is? Though? No, I, it's a, it's an online game. I have, I mean, I have played it in the past, as I believe Tracy has too, because she clearly knows what it is as well. All right. And I think I've seen her play it. This is go Sporkle. Yeah, <laughs> it's like a trivia game. Is it fun? Okay. It is. It's very fun. No, it's just weird. I said, "What's Sporkle?" And you go, "I think it's," a, but you've played it, so you know what it is. Yeah. Oh, all right. <laughs> You're all upset. I I'm on trial. I'm on fucking trial here. <laughs> I'm on trial with, with, you know, a person that, like, I mean, really, how am I supposed to go through the rest of the day? Right. Like, she's going to come in, and she's going to be, I don't give a fuck, but she does give a fuck. She desperately wants affirmation and respect. Desperately. Right. And so, mm. like, I, my feeling is, if you want respect, you, you can either have respect or you can have fear, but you can't scare people into respecting you, which is, I think, what goes on around here a lot. People are deathly afraid of her. I mean, there were people that told me they tuned in the show last night, and when they heard it was me, they were like, now I can go to bed. Going <laughs> <laughs> on, this solicitation, I get one out of every five from you, and it's disrespectful, and it's dismissive, and it pisses me off. It's shady. Just come and fucking address me and treat me like I'm part of your team, because quite frankly, I do just as much for you as everybody else, and... I think it's fucked up that you do that to me. That's my first and foremost qualm about Gary Delabate. But not the only one. No, it goes There's five on. other clips. Want to hear more? Wow. 
Okay. <laughs> My second and biggest thing that I want to bring up. Nothing in the world has ever pissed me off. Okay, I have two college degrees, one being in accounting. I'm not a stupid girl. We had guys coming in to work on the air conditioning system, and that motherfucker <laughs> had the audacity to call me into his office to clean out his refrigerator. He says to me, I don't really know what's mine and what's not mine. I said, really, Gary? I went into the hallway. I picked up the garbage. I said, Gary, is this yours? He said, no. I threw it away. I said, Gary, is this yours? He said, no. I threw it away. Next thing. No. I threw it away. I said, okay, we're done. Thank you. And I went back to my office. Are you fucking kidding me? You couldn't clean out your own fucking refrigerator? Am I your fucking maid? Do you want to just slap me on the ass and hand me a five when I fucking leave too? Could you be more fucking disrespectful? How dare you, you fucking Adelphi graduate, treat me like I'm a fucking piece of shit there to clean your fucking ass after you shit. Dis fucking respectful. It's so inappropriate that you treat me that way. You only call me directly when you want to tell me that somebody flooded the fucking toilet or something's messy somewhere. Guess what, sweetheart? I'm better for I'm good for more than just that. And for you to even do that to me is so fucking shady and disrespectful. And you are the only one on the staff that treats me that way. So when you sit there and you act like, I'm so sorry this happens to you, you should be sorry because you're the fucking only one that does it. It's not my fucking job to clean out your fucking refrigerator. You made me order another one so it wouldn't fucking happen. And the fact that you called me in there, you fucking, in, you can't intercom me to tell me that a fucking meeting's canceled, but you can intercom me to come and clean out your fucking refrigerator. <laughs> Fuck you, you fuck. Whatever. Wow. Well, there's, there's something. Right. Did you do that? Well, now, wait a second. I got to uh, say, that does sound a little strange. Why would you have her mm. clean out your refrigerator? Okay. My, I have a refrigerator in my office, which okay. we use mostly for waters for the guests. Okay. Somewhere along the line, not having nothing to do with me, people started to use it as a community refrigerator. All right. Will would put his breakfast in. In fact, we had a really funny incident once where I ate Will's breakfast by accident because I thought it was mine. <laughs> Richard started putting in weird sandwiches and leaving them in there and some weird <laughs> juice. And then everybody, because it was the only refrigerator in the office. Right. I don't know that I said, Tracy, clean out my refrigerator. I might have said, Tracy, can you have somebody clean out my refrigerator? I didn't. And it wasn't like, hey, you're a low life underling. It was more like, I don't know what belongs to who. I don't want to start throwing out people's food and then have them come and yell at me. Like Richard used to have the stuff in there. And he's like, no, 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 don't throw that out. So I, I had asked, can somebody clean out the refrigerator? I don't know about her two degrees. I apologize. You know, uh, I'm not sure what one has to do with the other. Uh, I just needed the refrigerator cleaned because I just didn't know what belonged to anybody. Um, I'm not interested in slapping her ass. Right. Um, and when, you know, the other thing she's talking about is sometimes I will go to the bathroom and it will be flooded or it will be clogged or it will be gross. And I go to her. Because very she's the office manager. I go to her very apologetically. I go, Tracy, I, I know I'm the one who brings this to you because nobody else will. Because sometimes people just go in there and ignore it. Uh -huh. right. I don't ignore it. I say the bathroom's clogged. She's the one who calls facilities. I don't know that it's that Jason does it. She's the office manager. Who else would I tell besides the office manager that there is an issue in the office? Okay. Look at Gary. He's got a whole... A yeah, but I don't know. Mm. I still have a little problem with this refrigerator. Yeah, the refrigerator one mm. I don't get, but I understand why you would call her to say, hey, the toilet's clogged. We got to call the but, plumber. But should I have just taken everything that was out of the refrigerator and thrown it in the garbage, not knowing who posted so it? Wasn't it sounds like, like that's what she did. But it wasn't like, hey, bitch, clean my refrigerator. That's what she hears. See, that's the problem. You, uh, Tracy, can we can we get this cleaned so your out? your point is when the refrigerator, let me get this straight. I'm trying to interpret. Your point is that since the whole office was using it, and she's the liaison through the office, that she would contact these people and say, get your stuff out of here. And Or maybe she, maybe she would know that's, that. oh, that's Richard's juice. I didn't know. Well, she Pe doesn't know who's Richard's People were juice. putting all sorts of shit in there. So then we ordered a refrigerator. She suggested we order a refrigerator to keep in the office for everyone else. And I somebody told me later on in the show, like, I'm a fucking prima donna. I needed my own refrigerator. But it was weird finding, like, there were sandwiches that were in there for days. Right. All right. So you feel that by telling her, she could have issued a memo and said, hey, everyone clear your stuff out or, or something like that? Yeah, all right, whatever. All right. I don't know. A lot of 
A lot of miscommunication, I see. Yeah, because I don't think that's what she heard. You know, like, we right. have everybody clean out their stuff. is not what she heard. Well, the, uh, you can tell she hears a lot of stuff in a very <laughs> angry tone. All right, here's Tracy saying more about you, that she's sick of your stories. Here we go. Here's Tracy from... <laughs> What is Tracy calling this show, anyway? The Tracy Show? The Happy Hour. No, The Happy Hour. Oh, the Happy, happy Hour. hour. <laughs> Good title. <laughs> the Happy Hour. That's the greatest title I ever heard. All right, you don't like the show. <laughs> hey, listen, it's, you know, I didn't like it when she was trashing other people. It's not my style. Right. It's just, I mean, I, listen, I'm not saying I'm above getting on the air and fucking with people. I'm the worst offender when it's that, but I think that... You know, it's like somebody wrote a note last night that, you know, she's almost like she's some heroic figure for coming on and trashing her boss. The heroic thing would be to talk to me in the office. This is not very heroic at all because she can say whatever she wants and she's now protected by you and the show and the audience. All right. This is one that pisses me off. <laughs> you know, <laughs> when we first had this, the conversation about somebody leaving the shit sprinkle like two weeks ago, and remember, Mine wasn't voluntary. Leaving shit, you see it there. I didn't see the tampon applicator. You see your shit sprinkled on the inside of the bowl. First, I went to Ronnie, and Howard TV, Chris Costa, came in with a camera and took a picture of the sprinkle. And I went to Gary, who was the person I am supposed to go to when that shit goes down. And he was busy talking to Ross Zapin, I'm sure about either fucking Bruce Springsteen or the Jets or the Mets or something irrelevant. <laughs> And acted like, well, I'm not the police of people. But then when I called him out in the studio and they, he was talking about it with Howard after the show, Howard is about to go into his bathroom or his office. I don't even remember. And I was like, oh, you mean the bathroom you couldn't be bothered with? He's like, well, it's not my fault. You interrupted me in the middle of a conversation. OK, Gary, you spend the majority of your time fucking telling your stories 80 times. People have heard over and over, and I respect them. They're great stories. You've lived a life most people would kill to live, but I don't need to hear it all the fucking time. I have work to do, and if I come in there, I'm sorry if I'm bothering your fucking coolness, your cool factor, but I have fucking work to do, and I'm going to bother you, and I'm going to interrupt you. We spent thousands of dollars installing a fucking key card lock in there, not so you could talk about Bruce Springsteen. Not so when I walk into the bullpen and you're talking to fucking John Hine about who recorded what album in 1998 or 1988 or 1978. Good point. Not my fucking priority. I want work going on back there. No nonsense. No nonsense. So is, uh, can I respond? Does Tracy bother your cool factor? No. Because I don't sense you being cool at all. No, I don't feel like I'm cool and she's certainly not squashing it. You know, right. again, there Ross stops by every morning. We talk, we, listen, we, I have a meeting with Ross every Monday with everybody. He's, he's in charge of sales here right. or, you know, a, a lot of promotions and stuff. What Ross and I were talking about that morning is in Tracy's head. We could have been talking. We talk about promotions day and night. He's in here. What about this? What about that? Are we going to do this? And okay. So if Ross comes in and we're talking about promotions, it'll be like, oh, by the way, did you see that show last night? I mean, I don't know that I have to explain my every conversation to Tracy. If no, that's, you don't. I mean, for example, or, when, I, or, go, when we, I go see Mel. It always starts out with, like, a fun sort of personal conversation, which breaks the ice, and then we get down to business. Right. So I understand what you're talking about. It's it, w When you're in a meeting with people... It isn't all business. It isn't all business. Part right. of it is socializing yeah. and sort of feeling each other out. So she told me about something going on in the bathroom. I heard her. I, you absorb it. And, you know, I may have been talking to Ross about something that... She, listen, she has zero respect for Ross as well. Okay. So... Me and Ross together might as well be two fucking lowlifes on a corner, you know, jerking each other off. <laughs> Seriously. Perverts. Really. I mean, that's, I mean, that's, she sees Gary and Ross and she sees two fucking assholes who, you know, think who the fuck they are, rich douchebags. So, right. you know, she's walking <laughs> up with that really? feeling. Yeah. Really? Oh, wow. yeah, she, he, I, In fact, I spent a good chunk of the first year here keeping her and Ross from killing each other. Wow. Really? Yeah. Who knew all this was She going was on? very upset with what Ross was disrespecting her because Ross was playing music in his office too loud. And she was like, this isn't the fucking record companies. Those fucking days She's are right. over. I got to agree need... with her, though. So I, I got to agree with her. I went to Ross and I said, you know, and I said, hey, could you lower the music a little bit? But it turned, you know, he doesn't take <laughs> criticism well. And it turned the whole thing. Because but his music, she, but she didn't... his music can't overpower other people's ability to work. And, and listen, I, I defended her in that argument. And I'm still a piece of shit. 
Actually, someone just let me know it was the other way around. Tracy was playing music, and Ross asked her to turn it. No, 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 no. Maybe, maybe I think Ross turned it back on her. She oh. plays the music loud, but she started. It was very clear. <laughs> Ross was playing his music loud because I remember the exact quote. You know, this ain't the fucking record company anymore. All right. All right. Okay. <laughs> Let's continue. I didn't realize what was going on. Man. Wow. All right. Let's see. Gary is a phony. This is again from Tracy's Happy Hour. It's just including me in things, you know, like as a prime example, Gary took, you know, a couple of the guys on a ski trip, didn't, and, way, and I, brought. I do imagine that people imagine in their minds the ski house is a chalet. It is tiny, Howard. I mean, really, really tiny. It's so tiny that we can't invite another family to come up. There's just not enough room. There's exactly... So your defense on that is that it was a, it was a bunch of guys running around in their underwear that it would have been inappropriate. Yeah, I mean, if, if John or Will or Jason want to come in and explain to what the house looks like, it's fine. So I, that I, was like a frat party that night, and it wouldn't have been a we were, great experience for a girl. I, I can't see her enjoying sleeping with those guys while everybody's farting and snoring. Half the guys and not half the guys, like, didn't bring Richard or Sal, JD, myself. And, but he brought all the guys from the office. And I, I almost feel. Did he bring JD? Did you bring a JD? I did not. No, so she's the, saying I didn't bring those guys. So then the point is. She already You're she putting her down on another level right. that uh, she, she already, doesn't but, but, belong But the on. point is, in other words, you took the guys that you wanted to be with for the weekend. Like, you couldn't have everyone. So, oh, my God. So she, a lot of the guys were turned down as well. They weren't turned down. Uh, turned down would be like I asked them and then turned them down. Right. I, I said invited, I have. Do you invited the people you felt most? I have you four. To be with? I have well, four Tracy's beds. Tracy's looking at it like, okay, Gary's doing something nice for the office. But it's not the office. It's Wait a minute. With hold some it. People. But there's a, you know, it's tears. You know what it's like when we try to have a party and then you say, okay, if I go beyond this person, right. then I have to invite all these people. You've been the victim of that. Tracy thinks of herself as on the same level as the guys he invited, and oh. she didn't get invited. She was left into the, she was put into the category of JD and Richard some and others Sal. She thinks are lesser than. Right. But like Richard and Sal were invited. In other words, a lot She's of saying, I don't belong on that tier. I belong on the other tier. Does Tracy ski? I didn't know that. I don't know if she does or not. See, the whole thing, <laughs> I don't think she does, and I don't think that matters because Jason doesn't ski either. Jason just right. sat there and read a book and okay. might have, might or might not have smoked pot. <laughs> you like, well, I'm part of the office more than Richard or Sal may be, you know, or JD. They don't work the same off hours. I'm there with those guys all day. And I think Gary genuinely realized he fucked up and felt guilty because after we got back, it was like during a vacation week, all of a sudden we all got invited to lunch at the Friars Club. And it was all... That's very nice, though. See, I didn't feel guilty. She made it clear to some people that she was pissed. And oh. so I said, I, I get that she might have been hurt by it. So it was a gesture. Let me take everybody out to lunch. And but then, then I had to cancel. she is saying exactly what I said. She thinks that she belongs in that group that he invited, that that's a hierarchy. You should be like me. Don't invite anybody to anything. <laughs> well, that's, you know, but... I'm, that's the best way to be because someone's always going to get offended. There's four beds in that house, Howard. Uh, Gary, you don't have to explain it to me, but if you invite anybody to anything, everyone else is offended. Trust and by the way, if Tracy, if Tracy wanted to have this conversation with, with me in private, I'd draw a diagram of the house and show it to her, and she might see it a different way, but she doesn't feel that's necessary. She'd rather just call me out in front of the whole audience. All right. Well, I mean, the last thing is kind of really more inside than outside. Mm -hmm. We have this one project that we're working on where Gary had the audacity... To have Jason send out an email saying, why wasn't this finished? Why wasn't this done? And this was called the Profit Project. This is where Kevin Kraft took all of our CDs of things prior to us being here, bits, bites, song parodies, whatever, put them into a system. And he was supposed to give lists to Gary of everything he went through. And Gary was supposed to go through them, through them what he wanted, what he didn't, what was for air, what wasn't. And for months and months and months, Gary would not take time to meet with Kevin. And then what happened? Kevin's computer got corrupted and we lost it all. Oh, I don't like that. What did you do Howard, there? It's just not true. Kevin came to me. Kevin would come to me every couple of days with a list of things. And he would say, what about this? What about this? What about this? Never. Listen, if it took me a week to get to him to cover that list, and then we'd go to the next one and we'd go to the next one. Never did I say, I'm not talking to you anymore, Kevin. I was under the impression that the How project Tracy was... Tracy thinks you, you, you blew him off? Don't know. Because she thinks everybody blows everybody off. It's a whole big fucking conspiracy plot to disrespect Tracy hmm. and the world. 
Wow. I wish Tracy was here. I don't. <laughs> I really don't because, you know what, here's the bottom line. Right. I don't want to be at war with Tracy. I clearly am. Well, you shouldn't I, be because but you I don't want to be, work together. But not only that, I don't want to be at war with Tracy because she's got way more energy to fight than I do. Right. Like she, she can fight this fight day and night. I don't want to fight this fight day and night. What little energy I have, I'd like to put into this job rather than fighting Tracy. Right. So for me, we'll do it on the wrap-up show. She'll call me a bunch of names. I'll defend myself as best I can. We'll work together. But I am, I am telling you right now, I am not at a war. Tracy has declared war on me. I am not fighting. You know, I'm not fighting. I'm not going to go You're on like with Sweden it. or Switzerland. Yeah, yeah. Beat me up. Kick me in the balls. Have a party. But I'm just, I'm not going to go there. Well, let me ask you something. Um... Could you, I mean, I think that you guys get into it all the time around here. And in, and then in the end, when it's over, it's over. It, it can't be that way with Tracy? I don't know that she's interested in that. I can be honest with you. There's, just, there's no indication in this show that I would love to work with Gary. I'm a piece of shit. I'm a disrespe dis disrespectful fuck. I, do you hear any indication in here that she would like our lives to be better? Mm. 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 <laughs> So when you ask me why it wasn't finished, if you could have taken the time away from Sporkle and Solitaire and just just spent a couple of fucking minutes with Kevin, this shit would have been done. Don't turn it around on ask me why it wasn't done. It wasn't done because you didn't address it. End of the line. End of the story. I, I, what else am I going to tell you? She is good on the air. There's not a day that Kevin asked me to come that I didn't go and see. And like I said, sometimes it would take a week. I would go back to the computer and he would show me a list. Or sometimes he would leave lists on my desk and say, do we want this? Do we want that? Do we want this? Do we want that? I would say, not important, important, important. And I just stopped getting lists. I don't, I don't have any recollection that I stopped talking to Kevin. All right. Tracy was on a mad tear last night. She even ripped into Lisa G. Mm. But Wow. Yeah. What was she, that all about? A Teddy, too. What, what did Teddy do? I missed that. I think I'm not sure, but I mean, this Tracy's is how this show is wild. This, like a very positive email about it. People enjoy it. Yeah, this is how deep it gets. Yeah, I think Teddy made the mistake. Nobody knew who was gonna who was on the shit list. It was a big, you know, secret, like, right. like right. the best picture. Was Oscar. Well, it was exciting. Right, <laughs> you it got really the was. award. Right. I was excited to hear who Tracy. My name was in the like. envelope. <laughs> so I think Teddy made the mistake of saying something to Jason right before Jason left last night. And Jason is seen as a Gary Sinka fan. Right. So that was not good. T Teddy told Jason that the the secret person was Gary. Right. Oh, I see what you're saying. Oh. Oh, Teddy revealed that Gary was Tracy's target. Right. That's right, oh, and 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 since Jason is my buddy, that's, it got right back to you. Don't tell yeah. don't tell the enemy's friend. Yeah. Oh, I see. I don't know if I have a clip of that, but Tracy won't do stories with Lisa G. Mm. Really? Everyone knows there are certain people I like in the newsroom. There are certain people I don't like in the newsroom. There are some people I refuse to do stories with in the newsroom. <laughs> <laughs> Hands down, and everyone knows who they've heard me do stories with and who they haven't heard me do stories with. Well, um, what if someone's just a casual listener and they don't know? Would you like to go into that? Or? I don't want to call people out. Hey, well, because how my... good is JD on there talking smooth? Oh, I, what, who was that? Uh, exactly. Uh, <laughs> he wasn't like, uh, <laughs> all of a sudden he was articulate. <laughs> he works better with Tracy than he does with me. Because like, with me, he's like, <laughs> What did he say, Fred? Caleb? It still sounded like oh, to me. <laughs> For the casual listener who might not know, do you want to say who it is? Wait, let me hear that. A reasoning. Wait. I don't know. And who they haven't heard me do stories with. Well, um, what, what if someone's just a casual listener and they don't know? Would you like to go into that? Or? I, I don't know. He sounded like he. No fumfering. What, what if it's a casual listener? It's still like a half a thought there. He sounds like he's working on a jazz station. <laughs> hey, talk I, about I'm the riffing. I, it just sounded coherent, but when you coherent actually, for him, right? You're right, though. It, it really isn't a. There, there's I like, mean, he there's doesn't like a partial end the sentence. Statement there. Yeah, he doesn't end the sentence, but he does get through a lot more words. Here than I am floating an idea. Here. You, you decipher. <laughs> Let's get back to Tracy. I want to call people out because my reasoning, I, I've, I've only heard from other people, other than the fact that I just don't really feel that much about her. But, <laughs> but it is what it is, and I just, I don't want to even go there. Okay. I, it's it's not a personal thing. Like, I don't have a problem with her personally. I just, work-wise, it's just been some shady stuff that's gone down, and I don't oh my. necessarily <laughs> want to do news pieces with her anymore. It is somebody in the compound. It is not Jason Kaplan. 
And if anybody really wants to know, they should feel free to call Teddy. Maybe I'll actually give out Teddy's cell phone number. Oh, my goodness. Well, you caught the you caught the worst of it. Yeah, I, I mean, listen again. I'm not at war with her. I think her problem with Lisa G was that Lisa she had a private conversation with Lisa G, and uh, then it ended up on the news. Oh, so she but, thought that was shady. Which yeah, that that can be a burn. Can I give you two thoughts on leaving Howard? Yeah, I don't know how you put on a show like that last night and then expect to be respected. I don't know how you figure that somehow commands any kind of respect. And I would be well, in all fairness. Well, what position? I mean, she's in a in a position where you know she got this show because of her legendary fights with Grillo right. and right. How is she supposed to do the show? Well, maybe she chooses not to. Or, Jerry. but if she does, if she does the show, that she's got to expect repercussions. She's got to expect that people are going to be hurt and angry. You right? can't see this at all as a performance. No, 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 no. There's no performance here. This is, th- listen, this is Tracy well, in her I, office at two in the afternoon, Tracy on the radio last night, same well, person. Well, maybe the show is a bad idea because it really, it's Tracy so honest and brutal. Right. That, 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 I, think, I, know, I, I think she thinks she's doing what is expected. She is. Absolutely. She absolutely She was is. called to do this. But right. did she people, think, love, people love the show. But did she think she would do that show last night and then come in today and everything would be fine? Like I you got You got to think about that. I would be embarrassed. If I were, you know, and again, I, if, I were, if I were looking for a job in five years and I knew a CD of last night's show was floating around, I would be embarrassed that a prospective employer would hear that and think, you know what I mean? And think that well, like this. They would, understand that we're asking her to do this. Right. You know, well, no, no, she, no. Howard, listen, she's a big girl. She, she can do this or not do this. I see. No, one's, no one threw her down on the ground and twisted her arm. Well, I don't know, though. I, she could say, I no, do, I don't feel comfortable doing this show. I'm simply saying I think there's a double standard here because you guys get into this stuff with each other all the time. I mean, it happens to me. I mean, I heard that uh, Sal still has a problem with me and 9-11. Right, right. Yeah, because there are some things that are done on the wrap-up show that, that people might have a problem with. Right. And on the wrap-up show, wrap show, we try to let people come in or call in as best we can. This is like a complete and utter ambush. <laughs> you know, I, I mean, really, i got to tell you, if Tracy really wanted to do a good show last night, give me the heads up. I'd have stayed. All right. Fair enough. All right. Well, maybe Tracy will come in later and address you on the air, and then we can clear the air. How's now, that? But is that the show? Tracy, mm. maybe it could be the show. It's I mean, Tracy's it, happy hour, though. That's what I'm saying. Is, but then that would be Tracy's not-so-happy hour. because right. The only She's, one happy in that hour is Tracy. Well, that's it's Tracy's happy hour, <laughs> not for you. The only one happy right. in the hour is Tracy? That's it. No one else. Everyone's, everyone's under their desk at home. Listen, this entire office lives in fear of her. And so everybody is, you know, they're afraid of her. When they Why find are they afraid of her? Because she can be a bully at times. All right. Okay. Well, I'll have her address that when she comes in. Can, will uh, we have Gary's happy hour? <laughs> yeah, but I think we'd have to have Gary's happy hour. <laughs> Gary's morose hour. All right, Jim, you're on the air. Wow, what a, she's a total dick, man. Uh, and you know this is all your fault, Howard. It, it is my fault. Yeah, I, he gave her a show. Well, actually, I consider it the audience's fault. You guys love Tracy. You sent me emails. Tracy, when she right. beat up on Gorilla, was great. And uh, I agreed with you, and I think Tracy's terrific. So, uh, sure, I gave Tracy a show. Tracy chose it. But the Tracy, show is, you know, she's got to find right. someone right. to trash. That's right. And she did it. Yeah. Do you really <laughs> think this is real? Do you really, Gary, do you really think she feels that way about you? Yes. I I've actually, I felt, I, 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 I was, I, I'll tell you, there are things I'm not aware of. I'm not aware of the refrigerator incident, but I was very aware that she was upset that she wasn't invited on the ski trip. Yeah. Um, and I was aware that she was probably pissed off when I, you know. She felt left out. Yeah, yeah right. but, what, but what the fuck? What gives her? I mean, you know. Not well, that's what the show like. is. I let Tracy right. vent her feelings. Maybe I am to blame. I mean. No. I don't know. Listen, the idea for Tracy to vent her feelings was this, and it's, she did it perfectly. No, it was great. But it causes, radio, but yeah, but it causes repercussions. Gary's right. Yeah, Gary's hurt. I, yeah, I mean, should I, should I just, I mean, is she supposed to walk in today? I mean, listen, we're going we're gonna to do our jobs. Right. So I've fought as bad with other people here. Other people have said horrible, horrible. Listen, that guy Lewis that used to be our board up said horrible, horrible things about me. And then the next day, like let, after I walked in, I said, hand him a piece of paper. I go, this needs to go on the air. I'm not going to stop functioning. This, right. this, the show is more important than any <clears throat> single person here. All yep. right, let's go on to Chris. Chris, you're on the air. Yeah, I mean, number one, if she needs to vent her feelings, firstly, she should try to pull Gary aside and have a set of balls and do it face-to-face. And secondly, what two colleges did she go to? Did, did neither of them have an English department to teach other adjectives? <laughs> okay. Thank you, Chris. 
It's an interesting note. Uh, let's go to Marianne from Brooklyn. Marianne. Howard, I called Gary last night. That made me sick. I shook all night, Gary. You got my message? First of all, my radio was on, Howard, to make me feel good, not to make me shake. That's not a show. That She thinks she's Queen Obama. Everybody has different levels at a job. And you know what? She has no respect for anybody. And all she wants is respect. Don't put me on the air with her, Howard, because that'll be a show. You want to know right, her, top three, her top three phrases? Uh, shady? This, this is what it is. And quite frankly, play it, Howard. Count how many times she said those three phrases. And you All know right, what thank you. Way. If you're listening, you should have triple flushed the toilet bowl because that's where you took it out on Gary. You made a mistake about the bathroom and you... you t- All right, Martin, you're on the air in Tacoma. Hey, hey, Howard. You know, Gary's got a lot of nerve. The way he browbeats uh, callers into the wrap-up show, he has a lot of nerve saying that uh, uh, respect out of fear because uh, this is his tactic. The way he treated Yucko, he's a dick. All it, right. It, one is a radio show and one is an office. Do you not see the difference? Yeah, I see the difference, but I also see you uh, making threats towards her personal and her professional life. How did I make thre- that- How did I make threats? He hasn't made any threats. I've made any threats. You're out of line. You most certainly did. You said absolutely. Uh, what if uh, some employer in the future heard this? Uh, oh, yeah, but that's not a threat. That's a th- that, I'm saying she should she should think about what happened and think about the repercussions. I'm not threatening her. Right. I, she, th- listen. Sour shoes. Sour shoes with his Tracy impression. Hi. And it's so fucking obvious, Gary, what you're doing. You're transferring all your anger at home because you have to do every fucking chore for Mary. <laughs> and you have me as your little douche running around. And the whole thing with Lisa G, she has the audacity. I tell her something off the record. It's not to be shared with five million listeners. Well, hold on. Mary, I'm from Brooklyn. Oh. And Tracy, J.D., I love you, but Tracy, you're way off base <laughs> with it. Fuck, fuck, hang up on her. <laughs> you know, I got to tell you about Sour Shoes. He's great. Awesome. Uh, the guy's a super talent. Yeah. I mean, uh, Ralph was over yesterday. He said, I didn't know this. Sour Shoes calls Ralph sometimes 10 times a day. Really? I didn't know that. He's a home phone. And he says sometimes he calls us Gary, and he thinks it's Gary. Yeah. Oh, okay, so here's the deal. Um, so, so, I mean... I- Ross Avalon, BBMs me. He totally gets the show. I got nine BBMs last night from Jerry O'Connell saying that Tracy is, like, throwing haymakers at me. I'm going to tell you something real quick. Let me get in. I'm in the on I'm in for show, real. show, ready to do my show. And this girl, I got to tell you, she jump-started my show. Fuck you. <laughs> hey, All right, this is going to sh- uh, Do we have to break? Hey, Sour Shoes. Yeah? Can you just do a constant uh, dialogue between Gary Farrell... Tracy and who else did he have in there? Oh, jeez. Um, oh, Gary, Marianne I'm from Brooklyn. Uh, Marianne from Brooklyn. <laughs> and Marianne from Brooklyn. That's a really good one. Okay. Let me just tell you. Let me do a show. <laughs> let me do a show. With- okay, so here's what you got to understand. I get about 67 emails from Marianne to do a show, and it's great. But listen to me. Tim came to me. Tim came to me with this offer back in January. I'm not an on air personality. Okay. He came to me to do this hour show. So he's the brainchild of all this. Well, we have to get this show on the air. Well, 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 let me ask you something. Well, well, it's very intense. I got, I got all four games last night, right? Nobody <laughs> fucking cares well about the NBA. Nobody even watches that. Tracy, you're really angry with Gary, aren't you? Oh, you, you don't even know the half of it. And so, so when I got home last night, I was shaking because he had the audacity to get his little Jewish rat, Jason Kaplan, to tell. <laughs> he goes to Teddy, and Teddy is just sitting there. He's just, you know. At, I'm so fucking... But Marianne, Marianne from Brooklyn's on the air. She wants to take this up with you. But Tracy, that's no excuse. No, listen to me. Tracy, if you got something, I wanted to flush my toilet five times. I was vomiting last night. Marianne, Mar- 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 Marianne, listen to me. Uh, we have to get an update on sports from Pharrell. Hold on. Okay. Um, the Mets now, Gary. What is, what's the Mets record, Gary? The Mets are 10-9. and nine. They were 10-8. <laughs> they were 10-9. They won six. Okay. Uh, the Mets, I, I got to tell you something right now. Hockey, is, I'm out of my gourd. I got five more. I got every game right Pharrell, now. How is your, Pharrell, how is your wife? Is she okay? Everybody good? 34C is... 
right now. She is uh, 34D right now. It's looking good. She got trim but Pharrell, Pharrell, Pharrell one, one second. Uh, Tracy was, has to go back to the office, but she wants to finish her thought about Gary, if you don't mind. Hold on a second. So was it me, Gary, who, who helped you quit smoking three years ago? I mean, I tried Nicorette. I tried all, but yeah, that's not the fucking point. I mean, I'm sitting here. I'm, I got to hold on a second. Ross is Ross is what? I'm not doing this right now, Ross. Lower your fucking music. <laughs> 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 Captain Frank. All right. <laughs> Thank you, Sour Shoes. Wow. Uh, there he is. Having his own dialogue in his head, sitting in his parents' house. That is amazing. Yeah, he's good. All right. Anyway, so you and Tracy, maybe later in so, the show, so, when so Tracy it, comes in, you yeah. guys can work through this. So we have no guests today. Tracy right. will come in. She'll yell at me. I'll get beat up, and then I'd like it to be done. Okay. Fair enough. Well, maybe we could work on this. Maybe. Yeah, is there no way to end the hostilities? I, I suspect that Tracy will come in with both fists up. <laughs> right. And then and that's hard to work through when somebody comes yeah. in like that. All right, Bobo, you're on the air. Hey, hey, Ben Al. Listen, uh, Gary's the voice of reason. I love this guy. I mean, it's, this is great radio, but how will Gary come to terms to deal with the out-of-control office manager during the work hours? How's he going to be able to do this? <laughs> well, I tell you what. <laughs> Uh, Tracy sees Gary is out of control, and Gary sees Tracy is out of control. We're going to sit oh down. More, more maybe, face maybe this. I got my list. More face-to-face -face time, less I am, is more respect. Right, but you don't have time for face-to-face -face time. And, 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 I'm going to have to make time to take those 20 steps to tell her yes. Uh, or you or can no. just call on the phone. Well, actually, you have every right to say, hey, somebody run down and tell Tracy something. That's your job. You know, that's the way you choose well, to Well, is job. that any more efficient than... I'm going to call her on the well, phone. Well, I happen to understand. I have a little insight into this. I can, yeah. I can, on this point, I can take Gary's side of things mm -hmm. because I do right. see when I'm, I'm busy harping out 20,000 things to, to Gary to do, he turns to Will sometimes and says, or Jason says, quick, run down and tell Tracy mm -hmm. because he doesn't want to forget. And I'm right. in the middle of telling him 50 things he's got to do because I give Gary a bunch of stuff to do. And by the way, there's times where, you know, Jason's out to lunch and I'll say, or, or somebody's out and I'll say, can you tell Jason this? Can you tell Will this? Telling people to tell somebody else, I don't see how that's a sign of disrespect. Well, take it up with Tracy. That's the first point you should take up with I, if Tracy. Anything, she I think says the only time she gets a direct call is when it's the bathroom or your refrigerator. Mm, well, well I guess I'll have to no, find hey, from now no on. Nonsense. I'll, I'll call Jared when the when the bathroom's flooded. She's obsessed with the bathroom, by the way. She was the one. She fa I found a hair in the fucking bathroom. Like, I, I, like she would come to me. She said she found a hair in the bathroom, and I would look at her like... I, I I don't I, I hear you. What do you want me to do? <laughs> want me to start pulling hairs off of well, guys? Write that down and take that up with her when she gets in. <laughs> I want to I want to straighten this out. She got, no, she got really mad at me one day because I cracked a joke. She found a hair in the bathroom, and so I jokingly said, "I said, hey, you know what? It's autumn. You never know what's going to fall off the tree." She was disgusted by that, and now she thinks that I'm the one leaving hairs, oh. and that I have no respect for the disgusting things that go on in the bathroom. It's a fucking joke, Tracy. All right, why don't you do this? When Tracy gets in, we'll have the wrap-up show to the happy hour. Can we do the happy hour wrap-up show and then not do this on the wrap-up show? I don't know that. You're the host of the wrap-up yeah, wrap yeah, show. Yeah, you guys did John's that. The John's, the John's the producer. producer. Let me ask yeah. John Hine if that can happen. You want, you want to do the wrap-up here and not do it again on the wrap-up show? Well, yeah. We're having the wrap-up of the happy hour, but he has to wrap yeah. this show. What we'll be doing is the wrap-up of the happy hour. You guys have to do the wrap-up of this show. So I have to go, Okay, so I have to go through it last night, this morning, second time this morning, and then again on the wrap-up You're like show. a rape victim. I see John Hine. John Hine looks like a wolf who just got a big piece of meat right. in his mouth. Fred's, Fred's right. I feel, like, I feel like you're the third guy in a fucking gang rape. No, I'm talking about a trial when you have to reenact it. Okay, uh, Johnny, what, what do you think? Is there any chance this won't be discussed on the wrap-up show? I love Gary, but we're definitely talking about this. <laughs> We have to. <laughs> one you know, it's funny because JD sits there. I wonder what JD's thinking the whole time he's hearing Gary trash like this. What happened to your voice? I don't know. I woke up this morning and. Oh, dear. You got a like cold? This. No, I feel fine. John's too, John's too sick to do the show today. I will have to take over and redirect. <laughs> Drink hot water with lemon. I'll drink hot water and lemon? Yeah, I'm telling you, it works. If I can't go, JD's going to do it because he was great last night with Tracy. Lots of lemon. Lots, Lots of, lemon. of lemon, man. That's yep. the secret. And I mean, I suck down whole lemons. Really? It works. Right. Hot water, man. Uh, uh, Maharishi Mahesh Yogi was a big believer in heating up the body with hot water. And I, you know, first I thought, well, what the fuck is hot water going to do? It works. Well, it's not hot, hot, hot water. Well, boil, like, like instead of having water with tea, just have the water, the hot with the boiling water. And John, there's seriously, there's cut up lemons in my refrigerator, which you're more than welcome to. <laughs> they really are. Whose are they? They're mine, because I have to drink them every morning for my kidney stone. So oh. take some of my lemon. 
Wow, very generous of you. It's a respect, man. Yeah, you, you, a lot of well, respect. Well, he's doing there. it for John. He wouldn't do it right. for Tracy. Yeah, because you're a boys club. <laughs> I hear what Tracy's saying. We're sour shoes. Boy, that's a good impression. That's yes. great, man. That's sour shoes. He's a genius. I might have to bring in sour shoes to do that routine here over the... Uh, oh, my God. <laughs> oh, absolutely, Howard. You have to do that. Yeah. Uh, J.D., what goes through your mind when Tracy was going off on the happy hour? <laughs> well, for the most part, I'm sitting there laughing. Uh, but, they, I mean, there is a certain point, you know, with certain things where it's like... Oh, Jesus Christ. And I just pushed the mic away, and I just I don't want any part of it. <laughs> yeah, I see. All right. But, uh, it, it's funny. That's what are I Are you the, uh, what are you, what is your role on the happy hour, actually? I don't know. I just sit there and say who's on the line. I just pick up the callers. I'm okay. kind of like the towel attendant at, at uh, you know, Buchenwald. And I, and I do try, like, you know, it, on the first show, she had trouble uh, getting angry, so I try and... Think of things. I'm the one that threw Teddy under the bus. Uh, uh, for, <laughs> oh, so, so you're there. And, well, to it's only backfired. On the it backfired because Teddy was still here when she decided to start yelling at him. And was, <laughs> and so she, he knew it was me, and I was. Just, well, you were just trying to make the show good. Exactly. That's right. So. But do you feel bad for you both? I, I, I don't want anyone to be hurt, but hey, she want, <laughs> she knew what she was doing. How so. does it feel to be part of a hit show? <laughs> you finally have a hit. Weren't you part of Ronnie's show? And uh, oh no, no, you no, killed, you Ronnie killed show. Ronnie. No, I wasn't a part of those uh, shows. You think I'm going to end at that show? <laughs> I'm giving Tracy three nights a week. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe Tracy will. You know, maybe there's sort of like because Tracy and is the office manager. It is hard for her to play both roles. I imagine. I'll ask her that later. Okay. Is this too much pressure for her? Because I, he, I have the feeling that she has to ratchet it up right. for the show. I agree. And then feelings get hurt. Right. But that was good stuff. I never even heard of Sporkle. 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 I didn't, I didn't know what that was either. I didn't know Gary was playing Sporkle. I only knew about Solitaire. I heard you were briefly yelled at, too. Was I? For your fake eyelashes. Is that oh, true? do I leave them around? <laughs> <laughs> so you even, you even got it. <laughs> yeah. What do you what, what 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 did she say? Does anyone know? Benji, no. do you know? It was something about Robin. You didn't throw out your eyelashes. Right, right. I was so every once in a while, an eyelash will land on the counter. Of, what was of that, Judy? Yeah. She just she just it was like an annoyance. Like yeah. I mean, it wasn't anything. I. It wasn't anything major. It wasn't a major stop on, yeah, the, on uh, the turnpike. What was the what was the offense though? I probably left an eyelash on the sink. Yeah, there were eyelashes apparently all over the sink. Maybe the something. answer is Tracy shouldn't use that bad. <laughs> <laughs> Take away her access. Take away her access. <laughs> Gary, let me need Tracy's access to that bathroom. <laughs> how is this going to resolve itself? Um, time. Hopefully Howard will resign because it'll take that much time to resolve itself. <laughs> if, if Howard doesn't resign, then it won't resolve itself at all. Yeah, what? I, I, if, if I know that we're done in December, there's no real need to become to, to make up. <laughs> Just coast by the last couple of yeah, months. Yeah, we can all be good to each other. I'll invite her to the post party. Now, put her on a queen seat. What what bothers you the most about how she handled this? Like that she blindsided that an ambush, you. That's an ambush. That you had, you knew nothing about this. Well, that you, you know again, if uh, if she felt this way, she should have talked to me about it. She's been saving up all this pent up anger that I'm unaware of to, you know, get. I, it's, like I said, I think it's a little bit on the cowardly side. It's easy to do it on the air because now you're protected. And how do you think this is going to play out when she comes in later? Uh, I think it'll be a lot of yelling, and I'm going to just, I'm going to, I'm going to let her just fucking yell at me, and I'm just going to sort of let it roll by. I, you know, I, I felt really good that I got to say my piece without her here. She spoke mm -hmm. about me while I wasn't there. I responded while she wasn't here, and I thought that was my best shot. Everything else after this will just be a fucking circus.